Okay. I have been avoiding making this video for a little while. Um, if you're new here, welcome. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of a interesting way for you to meet me, but um, if you're not new here, then you've kind of followed my story for quite a while. I've been doing this online thing for about six and a half years. <clears throat> and um, so as you can imagine, an individual grows quite a bit in six and a half years. And um, life is full of ebbs and flows and twists and turns that you just really can't predict. Um, I want to start off with this quote. I actually posted this on Instagram earlier. You're not a victim for sharing your story. You're a survivor, setting the world on fire with your truth. And you never know who needs your light, your warmth, and your raging courage. So I saw that quote today, and I've just been feeling the tug to just turn this on and share my process, and share my truth, share my story. But it's not easy to do when it's always, of course, fun to be like, guess what's happening when it's all good, like all good stuff. Um, it's another thing when it's less than exciting, you know what I mean? So um, that's always my struggle is like when things kind of get tough and I'm like, Ooh, what do I say? But I have sh shared with you guys, you know, in the past, um, you know, basically this video is going to be all about the current status of my life and where I'm at and what's happening. And a lot of that has to do with um, the marriage I was in. And I say I was in because um, we are separated again, um, but this time I did file for a divorce. And that might come as a major shock to <clears throat> some of you. Some of you that know kind of went on what went on behind the scenes are not shocked at all. In fact, cheersing me. <laughs> um, but I just want to be really transparent with what's coming up for me. Um, I'm still working through a lot of false guilt and shame. Naturally, that's what happens to a lot of people when they're the ones walking away from a marriage. Um, and I'm obviously still in like a major healing phase too. Um, but I feel the truth is a lot of the shame and the false guilt comes from feeling like really good about this decision. <laughs> so a lot comes up for me because I feel free and I feel lighter. Um, as you guys know, I actually just did like a two week trek through the Andes in Peru. Um, and I'm gonna do another video about that and my experience doing ayahuasca and I did Wachuma, which is also known as San Pedro. So it's been a journey. <laughs> um, it's been a crazy couple months, we'll say that. Um, yeah. So. I'm like, I don't even, there's like obviously so much to say, so I don't even really know where to go from here, but essentially I have decided to walk away and <clears throat> it's ironic because like Corey and I have a song together called Don't Give Up and I'm the one who's giving up. Um, but the truth is that even before that song came out, yeah, there's just so much. like. It's so much, you guys. Like, we were separated already in our first six months of marriage. Um, I want to say a disclaimer right now. I literally, Corey is family to me. He always will be. He's a beautiful man with beautiful talents. Um, but there was just a lot of stuff that was going on behind the scenes that I never really shared with, frankly, anyone for a long time. Um, because I was so afraid. So my goal in sharing this, I say this with like such, like I'm so hesitant to share my truth as you can see, 
because I want you guys to know that I take full radical responsibility for my end and I never want this to be something where I'm like pointing the finger outward and just playing victim because that's not what I'm here to do. Um, there was a lot of stuff. We both grew up with a lot of trauma, um, early childhood stuff. My side was even sexual stuff and also then just emotional and verbal abuse. And um, I've now worked through a lot of that and I'm still working through a lot of that. And then his end, you know, that's his story to tell, but he grew up with trauma as well. So I'm 32 years old. You know, I'm, I was finding myself just like in this marriage that was going down a road and I had seen major, major red flags way before I even said I do. Um, and Corey was right. I mean, he told me, he looked me in the face and said, Lynette, you love the idea of me. Um, you love the idea of marriage. And now in hindsight, I really think he was right because what you guys have to know is that <clears throat> I'd say a month before even like becoming romantic with Corey, I was in a really like long-term relationship with a woman. Um, I mean, I had been in relationships with many women before that, not many, I shouldn't say many, but like a few before that. Um, and so I was in a season of my life where I was in my 20s, I was dating females. Um, I never thought I was going to get married, to be honest. I've always kind of been a wild card. I'm an Aquarius. Um, and so Corey waltzed into my life and he actually was coming to me for advice about his ex who was leaving him for a woman. And that's how our conversation really kind of got started. Um, he had a dog, I had a dog, we went to the dog park and, and then lo and behold, like there was chemistry there, which I will say one thing I will not deny, like Corey and I have incredible chemistry. Um, and that's all lovely to have chemistry. Uh, but also there needs to be so much more than that. And so <clears throat> our relationship from the get go was always rocky. I mean, we never were in a committed relationship. Um, I went straight from the arms of my ex-girlfriend like a month later um, into this whirlwind with Corey and we weren't official like we just were dating casually but the truth was is that I hadn't dealt with a lot of pain um, and confusion around a lot of like the family dynamic that I had uh, basically when I started dating females like I grew up like very Christian you guys like I went to private Christian school like all this stuff so to go down that journey and to be so free and open-minded and honest was not affirmed in fact quite the contrary so and I've worked through a lot of the stuff with my parents now so it is what it is it's part of my story it's I'm sticking to it like this is my truth um, but there was a gap there of, I'd say, almost four years where I didn't have a close relationship with my parents because they weren't in agreement and in alignment with my choices. And so um, there was a lot of pain around that and still ch early childhood sexual trauma that I hadn't, hadn't uncovered at that point in my life. Um, so you're just like piling on like layers and layers of like, <sighs> you know, identity um trying to find who i was and trying to find all of those things so um wound up in this like saga with Corey. So this was like seven eight years ago and from the beginning he said you know i'm focused on business i'm not looking for a relationship and he was very clear um but i just was absolutely enamored by him and so it just became this like thing but there was no commitment there so the foundation that was built was very rocky because we were intimate and not in any sort of like there was no safety there for my heart and so there has always been this residual like um 
pain, I guess. I don't know what else to call it. There's been this like uh, little feeling, you know, of insecurity from the get go of our relationship. And we dated off and on like that for four years without him calling my girlfriend, calling me his girlfriend. Um, and I was like pining over him. Like, I'm not kidding. I just became so enthralled by him. Um, I was like in his vortex and <clears throat> it was honestly really painful because I was so in love with him that it, like I really started losing all sense of like who I was and what really lit me up inside. Um, although he was really helping me grow spiritually and intellectually, like a lot of who I am and who I've become and grown has definitely, I can't, I can't take away from him. But the truth is, is that, I mean, we were dating and from the beginning, I mean, like I said, he would like date other people and come back. Like we were totally sleeping together. And then he would come back from like some trip that he met somebody else and he would be like, I'm dating this person too. And I want to explore it. So are you cool? Like, he didn't even ask, are you cool with that? Like, it was just like, this is the case. So, you know, so he would like show up to my birthday party, but then he had like another girl sleeping at his house and they weren't sleeping. I don't know. It was just like from the get go, I started feeling like smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. All the while still going through my twenties, just trying to like figure out who I was in my career and all these things. And so while he had like so many great qualities to like elevate me and make me really see myself through my capacity in my career, relationally, it was a turmoil inside for me because he had such great insight for business and such great insight for how I could like expand. But then when it came to relationally, I was a mess and I just didn't know what to think about who he was or who, how we were going to end up. And like I said, pining over him. So I was trying to date other people too, but I just like really wanted to be with him. And it was this saga that continued. And that was from the very beginning. And it didn't end up until literally right before we got engaged. So it, we fought it we took that mess from Arizona to California because I moved to LA, um, in 2012. And I got a job cause he was going to plan on moving to New He was planning on moving to New York. So I was like, honestly, this is probably in the, in the stars. Like you move out East, I'll move West. Like this is a saga that I don't really want to continue anyway. So peace, you know, I was like, that's fine. I was like, but if you want to come with me to like, of course, if you want to come with me to like my job interview in LA, you should come with me. And so he came out here, long story short, he got offered a job out in LA. I don't want to get into the whole story, but he ended up in LA instead of New York too. So that's why this continued. So he went, moved down to Long Beach. I was living in LA. <clears throat> Uh, I, you know, not too long after it was still, still not official. We were never official. He was kind of seeing people down in Long Beach. I was seeing people in LA. Um, I got to date some wildly incredible people and learn a lot, but I didn't let anyone in. So there were some incredible people that really tried to romance me and wine and dine me and I literally had this wall up because I was so in love with Corey that I didn't even allow myself to explore even the idea of being with anyone else. So I was dating other people but like really barreling through their hearts which was really unfair. Like there was one relationship that was really unfair because yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there was a few in there that I was like, I was being careless with other people's hearts because I was pining over somebody else. And so that's unfortunately kind of the way karma works. It's really sad. Um, but I look back now, you know, six, five, six years later, and I just go, man, that was really not cool. Um, but it's also a part of the process. So um, to all of you, if any of you end up landing on here that I have hurt in the process, um, you know who you are and I'm very sorry. Um, and if I could take it back and redo some different things, you know, I would just be more communicative. Um, I wouldn't change anything necessarily, but I would communicate better. 
um, because everything happens exactly how it's meant to. We all know this, right? Um, so, <clears throat> dated other people, hurt other people, and then there was this one relationship that um, finally, this was almost, this was five years ago, almost to the day, you guys. Um, I finally threw up my hands and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna let the nice guy have a chance. So I met this guy at church and um, he was lovely, absolutely lovely, and we're still in communication, he's amazing. Um, not like that, it's like totally friendly, but he uh, really wanted to pursue me and so we started dating, but this weird thing was still happening with Corey and so he kinda like went up to him at church and was like, bro, I'm just gonna be really honest with you, like I wanna pursue this woman, she's amazing, but you either need to marry her or like get in back of the line kind of thing. And I couldn't have paid someone to say that, I swear to God. Like, I literally was like, what? You said that? Um, but the truth was, is that, because he was like, she's so obsessed with you, like, I can't even get in to try and, like, you know, date her because she's so focused on you. And so, all that to say, it was, like, not long after that that Corey kind of, like, woke up out of this, like, supposed, I don't even know. Um, and so all I want, I was like, I just want this guy to like see me the way I see him. Um, and so it was after that moment that like it, something clicked in his head. And I know he, he probably would say that this is different. Uh, it, this is my experience. So I'm just sharing from my experience. This is just my story, you know, and how it unfolded in my eyes. Um, but there's always two perspectives, which is actually the beauty of humanity, because mastery and self-mastery looks like just being okay with both and realizing that everyone has their own perspective. So there's never necessarily like a right or a wrong, it just is, um, because that's how I saw it. Anyway, um, and so it wasn't long after that that he kind of like all of a sudden snapped out of it and was like, I want to do this, full on, let's do this. And then like six months later, we were engaged. And we had no money, but I was like, finally, he sees me how I want him to see me. All I wanted was for him to see me as like wife material or something because I had so much insecurity from the past. Um, and again, like I said, it's coming from such early childhood stuff. So I encourage all of you guys to do the work inside that only you can do before you even try and like loop people into your mess and your you know your situation like do the inner work and that's my best advice to any of you that are going down a journey of wanting to invite conscious partnership into your life because there's so much stuff that we're carrying that we don't need to be it could be from ancestral stuff which i've definitely been healing a lot of um, generational patterns and stuff like that that aren't even yours to carry but you are whether it's vows of poverty um, you know, vows of silence, like all these things, there's things that you, like your former ancestors could have done that are still affecting how you show up in the world today. So make sure to like just really ask for the highest good for your vessel and to remove all prior contracts or any vows that were said over your name because, you know, you're carrying on stuff. Anyway, that's also another video, but I'm learning a lot. Um, so where were we? Basically, yeah, got engaged, it was very fast. I have a lot of money, and I, like, the thing is, is that, like, I've been, I've dated very powerful people that had, like, could have completely taken care of me, and I could have had a very different story, but my mindset was always, like, I want to build with my partner, you know? I don't want to marry into money. Um, I had tried that whole thing, and I, I mean, like, I had dated people that were really powerful in Hollywood, and I just was like, ugh, like... I don't know like I just there's like this weird stigma that I felt like then you have leverage over me which also comes from you know to be wined and dined in romance is not a bad thing ladies like to be taken care of is not a bad thing and I literally wouldn't let myself receive um, so that's something that I've majorly been looking at and trying to heal um, which has been really fun because <laughs> I've been getting flowers <laughs> letting myself receive which is really nice um, but all that to say, um, right when I got married is when I signed that contract with Ipsy. And so for me in my story, like that's when my career just kind of, you know, just took, t 
took a different um, J curve where it was just like in a very different echelon financially and in a place where I was very busy. Um, and this is my story, my side. I just feel like Corey was still in a season of building, which I, are you kidding? Like I'll forever be one of his biggest cheerleaders. But I also do believe that he was right. Like he was not ready for marriage. Um, and I definitely did put a lot of pressure on him to make a decision and he didn't he didn't want to have to choose between me or this mission that he has to fill but I did kind of give him an ultimatum and he made his decision and then as every saga goes like I did I ended up starting to really resent him because I felt like he wasn't pulling his weight and I definitely there was a season of the first year of our marriage where lower self Lynette was definitely operating on a high. I was so busy and I was so stressed out that I was taking a lot of my stressors out on him and that included both verbal, I mean I let loose on him um, and made him feel very inadequate which I am not proud of whatsoever. Um, and also that included, I mean our fights were so terrible you guys. I thought we were going to end up on 2020. It was so toxic, and it was toxic even before we got married. So that's what I mean when I said earlier about having like major red flags because I kind of knew, I kind of knew, like there was like definitely tendencies to go violent directions before the wedding. But I was so embarrassed and I didn't want to call off the wedding because there was, I remember one moment before the wedding that it got bad and he was like, I'm going to call your dad and call this off and da da da. And I remember in my head going, this shouldn't. I should not be getting married. This, I shouldn't do this. But my pride and my ego was so big that I was like, no, we already have these like wedding invitations out, like everything's planned, like no. And so again, I recommend to all of you guys, if you're sensing that intuition and you're sensing there's no reason why you should continue to go through things when that gut feeling like your second brain is your stomach, your gut, like your gut knows, trust that. Um, cause I look back now and go, man, and again, I don't want to like change or wish anything away. It's just more that I look, I'm learning from this. <clears throat> so early on in our marriage, you know, like I said, lots of different stressors and I just felt like because, so there was no communication and I do recommend like some type of mentorship or coaching. Um, before you get married, I do recommend some friends of mine. I will put them in the description box below if you guys are looking for Partnership coaching before you get married or engaged or wherever you at you are at in your relationship My mentors are some of the best relationship coaches and alchemists around and I wouldn't recommend anyone else to So I will put their link in the description box below um, If we could have had them at the time, I think that a lot of things would be different, but We didn't so here we are um so there was no communication as far as like, okay, so let's say someone loses a job. Like, what are we going to do financially? Like, how are we going to each feel like this is a partnership? And there was no communication there. And it just kept getting like more time and more time and more time. And I was just feeling like, dude, like help me out a little bit. Like, is there anything that you can do? You have degrees. And he would like, there's a lot of verbal abuse, okay? So like I used to get reamed for not being a degreed person, okay? He would tell me, you don't even have your degrees and da da da, all the business lingo you know is because of me. And I'm like, well, yeah, a lot of it is, but I also am working with a really big company and I'm learning a lot from Ipsy, so uh, it's like <clears throat> a lot. Um, so there was like a lot of back and forth. We both, like we both broke each other open pretty badly. Um, but I just felt like he just continued to like creep further and further into this zone. And, and it's not to say that he wasn't doing anything. I know, Corey, you're like up to some stuff and like crazy stuff that's going to change the world. And I cheer you on all the way. Um, it's just there were patterns that were very, very destructive. And we spent thousands and before we found our other coaches that I just recommended, we spent thousands in therapy and couples like 
um, we went to this like intensive and we would have mentors speak into our life. Like we tried everything, or I should say I tried because it was typically always me being like, something has got to give because this is not sustainable. In the first six months of our marriage, we separated. And then again, a year later, and it was upwards of three months where we didn't talk. And then another time where it was like three months and then I went to Coachella. This was like two years ago, April, like whenever Coachella was two and a half years ago or two years, whatever it was. And um, I was already gonna, this was when I made that video and I said marriage is hard and I pretty much like never thought we were gonna get back together. We were legally separated, hadn't spoken in months. Like literally he was living in Arizona, I was living in California. Didn't think we would ever get back together. And met a guy at Coachella. We definitely hooked up. It's a whole thing. My whole family knows. He made sure to tell everyone in my family it's great. Oh yeah. Um, and that was a whole saga. Um, I'm not proud of that, but I also am just kind of like, we've dealt with this. Like this is now beating a dead horse. This is something that happened over two years ago. And like all that to say, it's been a saga, man. Um, <clears throat> so there was a lot of resentment for that situation. And he's still like two years later was still bringing it up. And I was like, okay, we either need to like move on from this. Like we were legally separated. I thought we were getting divorced. Like, I'm not proud of that. I'm sorry. But like, he just felt like I hadn't given him enough like remorse for that situation. Um, and it was very hard to do because I was still in a very toxic sort of environment. So it was like very hard to come like very humbly because I was getting like verbally berated every day. Um, and again, like I said, I take radical responsibility in a lot of this. It takes two a lot of the time, but I will say you guys, as God as my witness over the last year and a half, I'd say a year at least, I have been doing so much self-development work. I enrolled myself in like high level emotional intelligence training and I've been with like healers and doing a lot of different things to really get myself clear. So when the abuse was still continuing, um, I would literally just shut down. So the last, I'd say like over a year, I was in such a deep depression, but like a very active depressive person because I was like still like doing stuff and like posting and like trying to like make sense of it because this is like what was my lifeline. It kept me going because I felt like I had a purpose and something that was keeping the lights on for me. Um, but most days I didn't want to get out of bed. I was not eating right. I was major had major suicide ideation happening in my head I mean it got dark it got really dark and I just felt so fucking trapped on top of a lot of like the religiosity that he is really into right now um, I'm on my path and finding my way spiritually so that was a huge dissension for us although a lot of what I do he's like in support of a lot of that I don't know it's very strange it's very erratic I'll be honest um, it was very confusing. Um, and there has been physical violence in our relationship, and I have been the cause of some of that in, early on in our marriage. Like I said, like I would just, he would be like screaming at me, and I would snap and like smack him really good. And I'm not proud of that. Like I said, I'm not proud of that. I even enrolled myself two years ago, two and a half years ago, into like anger management. And I took this course, and I was like, oh my gosh, like when I'm seeing red, da da. But then I realized after a lot of healers and a lot of different coaching that I was there was gaslighting happening. So I'm not deflecting, but I'm just saying that there's like a lot more that goes into this than me just being this like abusive person. Like that's just not my character. I've never been a violent person. I've never been a depressed person either, frankly. And I've gone through some really dark times in my life and never have I ever, ever, ever felt suicidal, ever. Like I really haven't. And I went through like my whole you know, time of dating females and my parents not talking to me, but I still didn't, I felt like capable of still moving forward. And this marriage really did a number on my psyche, I'll be honest. So it started to take a really dark turn last October. Um, after we, we went to Italy, we did this like whole trip to Italy that I paid for for his birthday and 
it started to like our fights were getting so bad it was really scary because I was like I don't know where we're gonna go from here and then it started to be physically abusive on his end to me and I wouldn't have dared reciprocate otherwise I would be dead there was a couple times that were such close calls I don't even yeah I don't I don't know I want to be really careful I'm like I didn't really even plan on sharing this much um see this is what happens when I'm just like freely speaking <clears throat> I'm so like it's really scary I'll be honest because I'm like I'm literally like I moved <clears throat> it started to get physically abusive and um there was a couple times where I was like, if I didn't like completely say like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, like I've learned everything from you. Like I literally thought I was gonna die. I'm not kidding. Like I literally was like, I don't know where this is gonna go. Um, and so my neighbor had to step in a few times. I called the cops one time. Like it was just, I'm like, this is not who I am. Like, here I am like trying to talk about positivity and all of this and trying to create like a difference in the world and we're literally like killing each other inside you know like this is so dark I was like can't we just like get a divorce and like move on like we can't keep doing this Corey this is so dark and then he would like guide us in a meditation the next day because he would wake up on a good side so I'm like it was very whew, like I literally felt like I was on a roller coaster <clears throat> um But I am like so scared right now, <laughs> like to even like share this. It's so weird. Um, I've been working with a group to help me like get through a lot of this, <clears throat> and I know that it's for a reason. And I know that I've got like everything that happens to you happens for you. I'm very strong. I'm very strong. <clears throat> There's like so much more, of course, but I'm just like trying to be wise with what I say, but I decided in December, basically, after like a really weird situation that happened when Cash got hit by a car, there was just like so much dark shit happening. Um, I knew I needed to start building my exit strategy <clears throat> to get out because I started seeing it go down a really weird turn. But inside I was like, I just was wishing for this like miracle to happen where he would just like snap out of it and like something would give. And um, that was like obviously delusional. Um, so I kept like hanging on because like everything on the outside looked really nice and shiny, which is kind of this whole fucking world is like, filtered and perfectly put together so we were like trying to do you know coaching with that couple I told you about that I recommend and I mean it was just like they were like Corey snap out of like your head chakra and go into your heart like they tried to like really help guide us um but a lot of the time I couldn't get a word in edgewise so I just I completely shut down for like the last year I like completely shut down and Ipsy, like, everyone at Ipsy was, like, really worried about me because they were, like, and you guys can't keep doing this because I would come into the office one day and just be, like, oh, my God, it was such a saga, you guys. Like, my whole contract with Ipsy was, like, such a roller coaster too, because I was so, I was, like, fighting so hard to, like, stay sane. <clears throat> Because I know I have like such a big calling and I'm, I was like going, God, I know who I am. Why is all of this happening? And I know, you know, it, again, like it's all for a reason, but sometimes it's like very hard. <sighs> I 
that who just really know I know that I'm gonna end up helping you know other people that are going through these things because like I don't blame Corey for all of it I really don't you guys like I I know that like <clears throat> it got really bad but like I wish him the absolute best like I want the highest good for him i wish him no harm i wish that none like i don't want any of you to go and like run to him and say like oh my gosh this is like a part of doing shadow work you know this is a part of growing and evolving <clears throat> and we have to do it you've got to face your shadow and you've got to do the work and i just felt like the reason why i'm filing and i'm not going back like we are getting a divorce i'm not going back i know he's saying that like you know, this is a sacred union and this and that and I, I'm just like, it, it crossed a threshold and I'm not even obviously divulging all of it, but it crossed a threshold where I felt like, I tell my friends, like I felt like a carabiner, like those little like hooks, when he looked me in the eye and said a couple final things to me when we finally walked out that can never be undone, unfortunately. And I felt like this... And I felt like I floated away in like slow motion. Um, and that's the moment that I knew. I was like, oh my gosh. That's what they mean when they say that's the last straw. Um, <clears throat> and now especially after going to Peru and doing all of this healing work and like really committing myself to like daily daily getting my mind and my heart right um i couldn't be any clearer that this is the right decision um and i i mean like to the point where i'm so beyond complete with this story and where this where what what he represented in my life that um I even have like ushered in and called in like the partnership that I would like to have and I know that it's possible for me and I know that already like I'm trying to not let my heart be hardened and be open to all possibilities at all times and explore and be treated really well by extraordinary humans um, because I don't want to become this like person that cowers away I want to show up and I want to usher in the most incredible conscious partnership um, that I see some of my friends and my mentors experience you know and I know that that's for me um, so yeah this has been um, quite the learning experience <clears throat> um, because of my vulnerability I've been able to talk and share with like a lot of people that have gone through similar things and um, I hate divorce I hate the idea of the being the one that is walking away but I also know that like I just got like a get out of jail free card <laughs> so a lot of the shame and the guilt that comes up for me is because I feel so much abundance just unfolding and I'm experiencing abundance in a way like I never have before. I found this house, so like I moved to Joshua Tree, I found this house, I talked to the woman on the phone for like 15 minutes and she literally just from talking to me on the phone said she had 40 different people applying but that because she loved my energy and she could just tell right away from talking to me, she's also like into the whole like healer circles and like the hippy dippy stuff that I'm into. Um, and she was like, this house is for you. I feel it. They're a rock climbing couple that um, basically are gonna be out of town for a year out of Joshua Tree, so they wanted to rent this out long term. And so I have this two bedroom little place that's now my own and I'm gonna definitely show you guys more of it. And I have so many plans to create content now that I feel like this dark cloud has lifted and I've been doing photo shoots out here and collaborating with fellow creatives and I've been like doing things that light me up and that are so exciting and unfolding in such a magical way that I'm almost without words. I'm so humbled 
to be in a season of just feeling flow where I'm not striving. I'm no longer the remote control car that's like backing up and hitting a wall and just like trying, I like couldn't see straight. And so it's so interesting how everything came to an end right at the same time. So I want to end this here because there's obviously so much more to unfold um, and uncover and like explore with you guys. And I'm such an open book. I've been I've been doing like Q and A's on Instagram. So if you're not following me over there, please do. Um, it's at Lynette Sine, and I've been a lot more vulnerable over there just because it's like my daily story. So you guys can definitely tune in there. I want to be more transparent with you guys. I'm so sorry for not letting you in, but I know that you understand why. So thank you for your grace. Thank you for all of your love and light and support over all these years. It's been honestly like such a blessing and you guys know, I hope you know, I want you to know that your words of affirmation, that's my love language. That's definitely one of my top ones as I deal with like, you know, growing into my full power and growing into this woman that I'm becoming, I'm realizing that words of affirmation are my favorite love language. You know, that's how I resonate. So when people send me messages saying that this landed for them, that they feel hope or they feel, you know, seen and heard because I'm sharing my truth, um, you have no idea what those kinds of things mean to me. Um, and that's why I've continued to put one foot in front of the other and create and share and vulnerably and unapologetically be myself because of all of the light that comes in afterwards. So definitely let me know if any of you guys are going through this similar thing. Um, I wanna create more content around building an exit strategy if you need to get out of something and support groups that are probably in your local area. I'm actually you know, attending one here in Joshua Tree. Um, there's a lot of different resources and I just don't ever want anyone to feel the same way, like trapped or like a caged bird because it's not any way to live. There is freedom and abundance awaiting everyone. It's our birthright. Um, and so we should never be in these like cyclical toxic patterns. Um, we've got to break the cycles for the sake of our children and the next generations coming after us. So that is what I'm committed to. You guys can count on me to always um, just continue to commit to the ascension process. You know, it's not fucking easy. It's so hard. It's so painful at times, but it is so worth it. The only way through is through sometimes, and um, it can be messy and it can be, you know, less than pleasant, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, I promise you. I love you guys. I really do. I really, really do. I love what I do. I love what's going to be coming next. I'm open to all possibilities, like I said, and I really look forward to this next season. I mean, the world is my oyster. I don't know. There's so many different things that I like didn't plan on being able to do. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. And I see lots of travel and I see, I don't know. I see like a really good season. And I feel it. I feel it in my bones. So <sighs> thank you for listening. And um, yeah, feel free to reach out on Instagram if you need anything. I'm here for you too. I love you guys so much. Be the light in the world, okay? Let's do that. Let's be the light in the world because the world needs more of it. I love you guys and I will see you again very soon. <laughs>